When Kathy and I first came to America several years ago with two of our kids, we had a third one that's an American, just little kids. Chris, we were preaching and we only came for three weeks and stayed 12 years. Yeah, that's a typical God thing. <laughs> and um, it came into December and we we're in Seattle, Washington, and we discovered that churches did not want us in their churches in December because of all the Christmas programming, and rightly so. And so all of a sudden we had no meetings, nowhere to stay and no money. So I start praying and I do all the things that you're supposed to do in faith to get a miracle of provision. All right? And nothing happened. Anybody been there? You know, I was telling the early service, I said, I had, did that in the church one time. A pastor said, don't talk to my people like that. I said, well, this is reality, man. <laughs> nothing happened. So I'm upset at God. You ever been there? Yeah, we don't talk about it, but I was. All right. And so I'm driving down Interstate 5, snowing, there's ice on the road, and I'm yelling at God. Oh, you been there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm yelling at God. I'm not, I'm not talking to God. I'm yelling at God because I'm frustrated. I'm upset. And I got a family. And I'm yelling things. Where are you? Why aren't you paying attention? Why aren't you listening? Why aren't you answering? And by the way, I didn't ask to come here. You brought us here. So I'm going on like that. And for some unaccountable reason, I slam the brakes on, I slide all over the icy road freeway, and I realize I need to get off the freeway for the sake of everybody else. <laughs> Pull off the freeway, get off. There's a parking lot beside a convenience store. I get out. I got $2 left. I go to buy a bottle of water. I'll tell you how long ago it was. And I walk in. As I'm opening the door to go in, there's a young man coming out, and he goes, Hey, aren't you Al Fury? I went, Yeah, why? He said, my pastor's been looking for you for three weeks. They've been making announcements at church. They find you, get you to contact them. Why? <laughs> Anybody know? <laughs> yeah, 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 why? <laughs> Not that interested. <laughs> why? He said, there's a family in our church gone away for a couple of months. They've left their home for you to have over Christmas and New Year while they're away. It helps them. They help you. And somebody's given the pastor some money. So you got money over Christmas and New Year. Yeah. And then I discovered, I realized, God was listening. God was paying attention. God was answering. Come on. All he had to do was get me in the right place at the right time in order to receive a miracle. Come on. Hallelujah. And the title of the message is being in the right place at the right time. Psalm 37 verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The word good is actually not in the original. The translators put it in there. It's the steps of a man are ordered by the Lord. And I am talking to believers this morning. Now, ladies, don't get upset. The term man is a generic term. It includes you. And just understand, us guys have to live with the fact we are called the bride of Christ. <laughs> the word ordered in the Hebrew, original Hebrew means to adjust, to direct. The word uphold in verse 24 means after a person falls, whether it's from misfortune or error or both, Jehovah God upholds you with His hands. All right. The word uphold in the Hebrew language, and I love this, means full support so you can raise yourself again. In other words, God will not allow you as a believer to go down so far that you cannot come back. Come on, hallelujah. Yeah. Genesis 22 verses 1 to 14. I'll just make a little remarks about some of the verses. I was reading this one time and I read something in it. And I went, that's not right. So I reread it and discovered it was right. And then I couldn't believe I'd never seen it before. Anybody ever had that kind of thing? And that's what this message comes from. All right. 
Right, verse 1. God is testing Abraham. And Abraham says, here I am. All right, verse 2. Take your only son, Isaac, whom you love to Mount Moriah, and offer him as a burnt offering. Tough to do. Verse 3. He found wood, prepared it for an offering. Verses 6 and 7. He took the wood, his son Isaac, fire, knife. And Isaac asked a question, where is the lamb? Which is what would be normally used for a sacrifice. That means Isaac did not know he was the sacrifice. Abraham replies rather strangely in the light of the fact that he's being tested. He says, God will provide a lamb for a burnt offering. Wait a minute, God said Isaac. So what's going on here? Well, you have to go back to Genesis 15. And in Genesis 15, it says, God took Abraham outside and said to him, Count the stars if you are able. So shall your seed be. Generations will come out of you, kings, nations, and so on. If Isaac is killed, that doesn't happen. So yes, Abraham's on trial, but God's word is on trial. So Abraham, in spite of the testing, which looks like it's going another direction, is still trusting the word, the promise of God, and he's holding on to that. All right. Verses 9 and 10. Abraham built an altar, bound his son, laid him on the altar, stretched out his hand with a knife in it to slay his son. Verses 11 and 12. Abraham, he is the angel of the Lord, calling him by name and tells him not to lay his hand on Isaac or to do any harm to him. Verse 13. Abraham looks behind, sees a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. He took the ram offered it as a sacrifice to God instead of Isaac. Now watch verse 14. Then Abraham calls the name of the place. Everyone say place, please. Place. Shout it out loud. All right. He calls the name of the place, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Now when I saw that, it just blew me away. See, One of the Hebrew names of God is Jehovah Jireh. But nowhere in the Scripture, as far as I'm aware, is he ever called that in Scripture. And Abraham does not call God Jehovah Jireh. He calls the name of the place. I had a pastor go to me just a few weeks ago. He said, that's not right. And then a couple of minutes later, he goes, it is right. (laughs) He calls the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. Because Abraham was in the right place at the right time and God provided in that place. Now hear me. As believers, we're always looking for a gift, a ministry, a meeting, a church, something somewhere, God out there, and God said, whoa, that's not the way it works. Where you are is the place that is called Jehovah Jireh. Your home, your work, your school, your automobile, wherever you are, your church, anywhere. The place where you are is Jehovah Jireh. Right here today, this place is Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. And that began, that changed the way I saw things. Come on, hallelujah. I don't have to go looking here, there and everywhere. Where I am, excuse me, I'm coming down. Where I am, right here, is Jehovah Jireh. This place. Oh, I know God's Jehovah Jireh, but He called the place. The place is Jehovah Jireh. And when you and I are in the right place at the right time, that place will be Jehovah Jireh. The Lord's provision shall be seen. 